In 2000, George Knapp started visiting Skinwalker Ranch with a photographer and did interviews with scientists, locals, and witnesses for his documentary film. Mm -hmm. In 2003, though, the word on Skinwalker Ranch was spreading. And it was being overrun by trespassers, and Bob Lazar is not the guy I want to speak of. <laughs> he showed up, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. Bob Bigelow. <laughs> he keeps coming back. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's being overrun by trespassers, uh, and Bob Lazar. <laughs> just Bob Lazar. He <laughs> just keeps coming back. Just <laughs> popping fences. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing him just running like, huh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> over the fence. <laughs> oh, we got a, we got a Bob Lazar again. Bob Lazar sighting. Oh my god, we got a code twenty three Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A code one fifteen. Ah, <laughs> come on I now. Remember. I know, but I couldn't remember. What's oh, it's okay. Head. I'm sorry. I'm glad you chimed in with it though. All right, the joke so, was put in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's overrun by trespassers, and Bob Bigelow. There he is. <clears throat> He asked George Knapp not to release the film to uh, eliminate some of the... Because it was already so popular and being overrun. Yeah. It was hindering their investigation. Yep, yep. Bigelow did allow George Knapp to write some articles in papers about Skinwalker Ranch as long as he didn't include any photos. Mm -hmm. But in 2005, Bob Bigelow told George Knapp that he could go ahead and release his book, The Hunt for the Skinwalker. Mm -hmm. Read by Lennon, also was one of the sources for my research, also. Again, though. Read by me. I did the audio book. Yeah, you did. It's, it was an incredible job. It <laughs> sounded nothing like you. It's pretty impressive. How do you mask your voice like that? Channel Jeff. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to do it because I don't want to do the stupid fish eye. Uh, again, though, he asked him not to add any photos of the ranch, which is why there was no photos in the book or anything. Thank you. Uh, the hope was that different people in other locations would come forward and say that similar things were happening. That way, Nids had somewhere else to investigate. Mm -hmm. Because at this time, in 2005, mm -hmm. uh, the activity at the ranch was dying down. It was almost like it was like, all right, fucking done with this. <laughs> Stop. Move on. Move I, on. I need a break. <laughs> you so, need a break. So what happened is they... Uh, they did that in hopes of finding other locations that had similar whatever. Yeah. Stalling still. Stalling <laughs> still. <laughs> I see why you have trouble finding your spot when you don't have glasses on. It's me. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, there it is. Okay. Other locations did pop up, but nothing to the level as to what Skinwalker Ranch had and never led to any additional studies. Yeah. Around that time, NIDS dissolved because of the activity at Skinwalker Ranch decreased and these other sites didn't have as much mm -hmm. activity. Yep. Finally, the ranch was sold in 2016 and Bigelow, Bob Bigelow, did not own it anymore. I'm saying Bigelow because I'm afraid to call him Bob Lazar again. No, that's not what it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were laughing at that. I was like, I have to. I'm sorry. No, um, please don't change it. Um, everything I've ever heard of him... I've yeah. always heard him called Robert Bigelow. <laughs> so when he's like Bob Bigelow, it just, I'm sorry. It makes you sound so like friendly, like your best friends. You know, for years. George Knapp is friends with Bob Lazar, and he or <laughs> he did it again. This is why Robert Lazar. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I mean, that is his name. Bigelow, Bigelow, Bigelow. <laughs> there he is. You say his name three times, he appears. Oh God! Oh, my I love God. that you're laughing, but you're shaking my camera oh, everywhere. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Earth, my cam again. <laughs> All right. Whoa. So, in the interview, by the way, some of the a lot of the information I got was from his, um, which I will talk about in a second. Uh, in a presentation he did for UFO Fest. Okay. And in that, he was calling him Bob. Bigelow, but he's friends with him, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I wrote Bob Bigelow. I have to, like, pause. It's all good. Roberto Bigelow. Also, fun fact. Uh, yeah, tell me. Bob Bigelow also refers to himself as Bob Bigelow. <laughs> Bob Bigelow's <laughs> entering. <laughs> if you smell a loud, well, Bob Bigelow is cooking. He's cooking up some, <laughs> some shit. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. I had, I had fucking Taco Bell yesterday. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Bob Bigelow had Taco Bell yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> oh, <coughs> oh, wow. Wow. All right. I'm going to go back to finally again, only because finally the ranch was sold in 2016 and Robert Bigelow did not own it anymore. Mm-hmm. This relieved George Knapp of his promise and he made his documentary, The Hunt for the Skinwalker. Go mm-hmm. check it out if you haven't already. Uh, Jeremy Corbell. I almost thought you said Jeremy Clarkson. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, all right. Yes, uh, they, they collaborated together. From it. What's that? No, he probably would have gotten fired from it. Yeah, he'd make some kind of reference to something. Well, using this documentary and George Knapp's presentation at the 2018 UFO Fest in Oregon, as well as the book that kind of has the same name as the UFO, The Hunt for the Skinwalker. Here is what he and the NIDS team found and experienced. <laughs> Nothing. All right, that's it, boys. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Tighten a little bow at it. So when Bigelow, nope, yep, when uh, <laughs> <laughs> he went cross-eyed. <laughs> when Robert Bigelow bought the ranch back in 1995, mm. I think we said, uh, the NIDS team, nope, the NIDS Science Advisory Board had an argument as to what approach to take with the ranch. Some wanted to go go in quietly with no technology and just interact with whatever this anomaly is and yeah. observe it. And, of course, right. He walks out into the open field. Speak to me! <laughs> there, At the end of this episode, there is this, a moment that I get to tell you that they walk in the middle of Homestead <laughs> by themselves and experience happens. We'll get there. But that was funny you said that. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, the exact same thing you did. That's funny. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> yeah. So See, I'm, I'm remember good that. <laughs> the other uh, half wanted to go in with sensors, cameras, and other equipment to try and measure things like science does. Scientists mm-hmm. do whatever. This was ultimately the side that won out and the investigation began. I started reading like a robot. Yep. It this works. rock is three inches tall, six 16 inches wide. Inches wide. Ooh, <laughs> that was close. Um, they investigated. Sure. Is, is not at all what I wanted to say. I mean, they did. They did investigate. But yeah. they also installed a trailer with sensors and gear. They installed cameras on poles that viewed the whole property mm-hmm. to detect and record any anomalies. Yeah. Don't know why I looked at you. They interviewed the families. Nope, not there. So there was only one family, the Gormans. Yep. And looked into their background. Thoroughly looked into their background to see how, what, how credible they were. Jesus, you guys ever heard of clearing your search history? <laughs> <laughs> Everything checks out, but a lot of butt play porn. <laughs> That's a big topic for you today. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, they checked the property for geomagnetic Properties. <laughs> There's a blind guy trying to read. Sorry. Uh, they checked the property for geomagnetic properties. Shit. <clears throat> they took soil and plant samples to study. They wanted to be sure that there were not any hallucinogenic properties. That may be the cause of all these sightings. Mm-hmm. Uh, the results came back as negative. There were no hallucinogenics. So no acid trips were being had. Yeah. Well, that's actually how the uh, Salem Witch Trials happened. Really? Yeah. How so? Tell me. You really you don't know? A little history? Do you not know this? Just give them a small, short history. All right. Quick. So, uh, shit. Uh, it's called ergot poisoning. Okay. Um. So the, Is that from the plants or is that from the soil? That's from the plant. Uh, some, the plant. They, they got it from the plants. <laughs> got it. Uh, I believe that it was a disease. I'm pretty sure it's a disease. Not uh, a disease that attacked the plants, which they in turn used to consume yeah. in various whatever types of plants. I think it was the flower. I think it was flower that they got it oh, from. Oh, so they got it from like the, the wheat. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. um, and it's like a hallucinogenic and it made them all tripping for months and months. Well, and then they started killing bitches because they said they were witches. True story. Sorry, I just wanted to rhyme. I didn't mean to call them bitches. It's a true story. We're going to do a quick Lennon fact check. So let's pause for a minute in case it... It's still recording. I've done it. Got up. I have a light. It's still recording. I was about to say I have a light, so I hope it's still recording. Sure is. We're gonna we're gonna do that and that because I had you on full screen, so I can get two full views of your. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Continue. That's right. Well, you have nothing else to watch. 
to watch you speak. Where's my mouse? There we are. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Back to that. No acid trips were being had. The NIDS team started experiencing the same things the rancher had, the rancher and the family, the Gormans, had been, but everything seemed to happen just outside the camera range. Like it knew they were recording and didn't want to be filmed. They had some, nope, they had tons of equipment made, in fact, manufactured. Oh, God. They had tons of equipment malfunctions, uh, kind of like my eyes. Uh, Batteries would die. Vehicles would die at the same spot on the property. Mm-hmm. Compasses would go haywire and just many weird and measurable things. How's your fact trick going? Uh, contracted from rye bread, yeah. ergot poisoning was given was delivered into the systems of the people, um, which caused convulsions, muscle spasms, delusions, a sensation of crawling under the skin, in extreme cases, gangrene of the extremities. Severe hallucinations can also be the symptom of lysergic acid, is the substance from which the drug LSD is synthesized. So they were well, all damn. pretty much tripping hard on LSD. Um, uh, uh, the uh, one website here said that the women had that the spasms, convulsions, and uh, all this stuff also played into the delusions of everybody else tripping out, and they thought that these were weird witchcrafty things. 